Hello, Mr. Randy here, Gallic Community College. We're going to take a look here at uh, setting AutoCAD up to give you the look and feel that uh, we use in the lab here at KCC when you install AutoCAD at home. This is AutoCAD 2015 and you're looking right now at my screen and this is a brand new fresh install of AutoCAD 2015 and this is what you'll see the first time you launch AutoCAD and get into the drawing editor. You'll notice compared to what you see here at the college that um, there's a lot of stuff on the screen here that we don't have at the college. Uh, the design feed and, and these toolbars and the view cube and up in the very top right corner here the uh, display controls. Um, we're missing some buttons down in the tray down here that we'd like turned on. Um, and there's some other settings like the very tiny crosshair that we have right now on the screen and the very tiny box for that crosshair that allows you to snap the endpoints and things. That's really small and we'd like it a little bigger. So there's lots of things we want to change to the look and feel and I'd like to walk through those settings for you. To make things worse, there are, for some of these things, multiple places where you can turn them on and off. So oftentimes it's AutoCAD, there's more than one way to do things, uh, but we're going to show you hopefully the simplest way. I'm going to begin uh, with AutoCAD's options dialog box. So I'm going to right click just in the middle of the screen here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on options down here at the bottom of the menu uh, to take a look at the option control. And when you first do that, you're going to come up in the files tab. We'll be messing using the file tab. Uh, in another video when we talk about setting up your templates and things, but for right now we're not going to do anything in the file tab. Under display, uh, one thing I want to show you, we use the dark color scheme here because it's the default and that gives us these very dark toolbars um, and the dark look. And actually I like that look because it doesn't put too much light into the eyes, but it does not have very much contrast. So. If you have some visual issues and you'd like more contrast in your toolbars, uh, switch this to the light color scheme and hit apply and you'll see it change here. And now dialog boxes have a grayed out background and the toolbars will have a white background. Remember these are grayed out right now because I'm in this dialog box. I'm going to go ahead and close this just so you can see. This is the white or light colored scheme and it has more contrast. So if you have trouble working at home, seeing your toolbar buttons and things. Try flipping that. Alright, I'm going to go back to options. I'm going to go back to dark because that's the way we have it here. And I'll apply that. Now I want to turn a few things off here in display uh, and make a couple settings. So I'm going to actually switch the crosshair size right here. We use about 20 or 25 so I'm going to set it to 25 here. Um, and that'll give us the uh, larger crosshair size. I'll apply that. And then uh, there's not much else here that we want to turn on or off. Uh, a lot of these things we can do in a different place, so I'm not going to change them here. Uh, this number, by the way, when you zoom and your arcs turn into polygons, the higher this number, the better they look, but the slower your graphics will perform. Um, FYI. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go to system, not much here, I'm not going to show you everything that's here, nothing there that we changed to speak of. Uh, under the user preferences you can choose your default uh, units. Um, again, that's usually controlled in the template file, that's how we do it, but, but if you're starting a new drawing from scratch, uh, it controls the default units. Um, I'm going to go to drafting and here we've got a couple things you can change. Um, when you get an endpoint marker, you know, you mouse over a line and you want to snap to an endpoint and it lights up green or a midpoint or whatever, this controls the size of that marker. Um, so if you want to kick that up, you could. And then this is the aperture size. That's the size of the little box when you're mousing over a line to get the endpoint. Um, the bigger the box, the more stuff you're going to snap to, the smaller the box, the closer you're going to have to get to being right on that line before the endpoint will light up. Um, the default setting is actually a pretty good uh, medium setting for, for using that. I'm going to go to the 3D modeling tab. There's a couple things we want to do here. 
I'm going to turn off this 2D wireframe visual style. That's this I this uh, switch bar up here. And I'm going to turn off the display viewport controls option. Uh, and then under selection, we do have another thing. This is the pick box. You can see the little pick box there. That's what you get when you do an erase command or you do a copy command or whatever and, and you have to select objects. Well, that's way too tiny. You have to be very precise with your mouse to pick things. So we like to kick that size up. And again, it's just an eyeball thing. You decide how big you want it. If you get it too big, it becomes more kind of cumbersome. But um, So don't go too, do get, don't get too carried away. And then this is the size of the grips when you click on a piece of geometry. You've seen them. Uh, you can control the size of the grip. Um, and I think that's everything we want to do here. I'm going to apply all that, and then I'll go ahead and hit OK. You can see a few of my things have disappeared here. I still have a couple things up on the screen, which we're going to deal with. All right, so uh, up on the ribbon, up here, I'm going to go to the View tab. And uh, this is the UCS icon. It's down here at the bottom of the screen. It shows you the current X and Y direction. It's pretty handy when you're working in 3D. I think in 2D, you know your X and Y coordinate system, so I don't think you need that up there. So we turn it off, and I'm going to do so. Uh, the view cube is already gone, but I'm going to switch that off there just so it's off in both places. Then here's the navigation bar. That's this bar over here. I'm going to turn that off with that button. You can uh, turn off file tabs, for instance. I'll do that. You can see what happens. My drawing tabs have disappeared. If you want more screen real estate, um, you can do that. It just doesn't give you the ease of being able to switch between drawings. Um, I kind of like it. And then I can start a new drawing just by clicking here instead of going up to a toolbar button. Um, but you can decide at home what you'd like. Then the layout tabs, uh, we don't use them much here. If you never use them, you could turn them off, but they don't hurt anything. So that button turns those layout tabs off. All right, now I'm going to go over to the Autodesk 360 button tab, I'm sorry. And uh, I want to turn off this design feed. And you can actually X out or hit this button. Either one will work, and it should stay off the next time you launch AutoCAD. Some of these things that I've turned off, if you don't turn them off the right way, next time you use AutoCAD, it will, they'll come back. Uh, but what I've shown you here today, they should all stay away. Now I have a beautiful clean screen, which is what I like. Lots of real estate for drawing. Um, finally, in our kind of setup here, there are a few things that uh, I'd like to turn on. Down here in the tray, a couple of other buttons down here that I'd like to have on. So I'm going to click on the Settings button, or Customize button here. And what I'd like to do, first of all, here at KCC, we turn the coordinates on, just so you kind of know where your mouse is. They really don't do anything for you, but it shows you the coordinate display. I'm going to turn on the Dynamic Input button, and I'll show you what that is in just a minute. And I'm going to turn on the Line Weight button. So again, a coordinate display, Dynamic Input, and Line Weight. And I'm just going to click out now. And first of all, again, you can see as I move my mouse, the coordinates change down here, and I can see roughly where I am. It's not a tremendously useful thing, but um, it's nice to be able to point out to a student that they're in a certain point in space sometimes. Now, dynamic input. Uh, let me click right here and just drag a window, and you can see I get all this display on my screen that says specify opposite corner or gives me some numbers I can input. Um, I just don't find dynamic input to be that useful in AutoCAD and it really clutters things up and it confuses new users terribly so we like to turn that off even when I draw a line it's giving me dynamic input and right now it says I'm at 37 degrees but if I click I don't get a 37 degree angle I get a 37.01728491 whatever um, the precision is much higher than what you see in the display and so it misleads you into thinking if I get this right at 30 degrees and I click I'm gonna get a 30 degree line that's not true so we shut off dynamic input because it's very confusing so to do that I'm gonna come down here on the screen and the button is right here dynamic input and all you do is click it so it turns gray and that shuts it off 
Uh, the second thing I want to do is, is turn line weight on and I'm going to go back to the home tab and I'm just going to change the line weight here for a moment and draw a couple lines. We use line weights in our templates and I'm going to switch the line weight back to default and let's change the color just for the fun of it so you can tell the difference and let's draw a couple more lines. So these should be skinny lines and these should be thick lines when I turn line weight display and I'm going to turn that on and you can see that that's what's happened. I have thick lines and thin lines. When you use our AutoCAD templates at home we have line weights set so that your visible lines are thicker, your hidden lines and center lines are thinner and dimension lines and the border lines on the title block are very thick and we control all those line weights in the template sometimes it's nice to turn them off sometimes you could have a line hiding under a line that you can't see um, and so uh, the line weight button down here if you just click it allows you to turn line weights on or off so you can see what's going on um, and we have that button turned on here so I wanted to show you how to get that same look and feel uh, at home alright uh, all the rest of these are toggles and and uh, you'll learn about them in class so we don't need to talk about those at all so there you have it this is uh, all the settings that that uh, I perform to get AutoCAD set up here at KCC regarding kind of the look and feel if you check out this part two video it'll show you how to get your templates set up and file locations and uh, how to get your title blocks and borders installed uh, good luck and uh, have a great day